Lucy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello, <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Now Something Complete the Machinima. Um, it's me, Damien Valentine, this week, and I'm joined by Tracy Howard. Hello. Uh, Phil is still doing uh, hurricane cleanup. Um, he's fine, so you, you don't need to worry about him. He's just got a lot to do, so he, he can't make it to our recording session, but he will be back with us next month. And uh, Ricky is getting ready for Halloween. Um, yes. And look, I think he's looking forward to scaring lots of people. So uh, that should be fun for him. If you're in North Hollywood, go and take a look because it looks amazing. Yeah. I would kind of wish I could go and see it in person. Yeah, I know, too. <laughs> I know. All right. So um, we're going to be discussing uh, machinima news uh, or machinima related news uh, in this episode. Um, so, Tracy, what have you found for us? Yeah, well, I've got quite a lot of um, bits and pieces uh, this month, um, mainly a series of interesting projects to share, but also some kind of useful sources of stuff that I found. Firstly, um, the BBC Sound Archive has been released for free and includes more than 33,000 samples um, that you can use in your films. And they date back to the 1920s and they include things like footsteps and machines and crowds and events um, and all sorts of different things. Um, I'll put a link on the show notes. Um, I'm not 100% sure if everybody around the world can access these. I think they can. Um, do you know if they can, Damien? Uh, I have no idea, but I hope they can. I hope they can as well. Um, I'm, I'm fairly sure you can. So let, let's leave it at that and then let us know if that's not the case. Um, so that's that one. Then Evan Ryan shared with us um, a link to an auto painter AI, um, which creates textures for 3D models with AI in Blender. Um, sounds like a really interesting tool um, to have in your arsenal. So um, check it out. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, but in the meantime, thanks to Evan for that one. Google has introduced a film search AI tool. Now, um, it's not something that's actually going to help you find something in a film, or at least that's not how it's being described. It's going to help you find something when you point your own um, phone's camera uh, using something like a, a GPT-like chatbot um, to interface with it. So it basically seems that you can find out more about the environment that you're in rather than interrogate anything that you might want to uh, find in a, in a Shazam kind of like way. However, my thoughts are if you can actually point your phone at a TV and computer screen, then why can't you find something from whatever's on the screen? I guess we will find out in due course, but um, quite interesting that we're able now to do sort of uh, image matching in order to find source material. I guess IP and the way things are presented or um, restricted using IP might be one of the challenges going forwards with that. Um, yeah. But we'll see in time. I saw as an advert for the Google Pixel 9 phone, I think it is. Mm -hmm. The latest Google Pixel phone anyway, and they're showing off these features and they had someone got shot of a chair and they drew a circle around it, and then the search was able to find the chair to buy. Oh, okay, yeah. So you can do stuff like that with it. Um, and to be honest, I didn't take a whole lot of notice. I just remember that when I saw this, and I thought, okay. Well, that kind of thing's been around for a, for a while, really. Um, I've seen that done on, on shopping center apps, basically. Uh, mm. Interesting that Google are now doing it. But I'd like to see a more expansive use of it. So whether that will happen or whether this will allow that to happen or whether you can integrate it with other tools that mean that can happen, I don't know. But I can see potential, certainly quite interesting potential uses for it along the lines of Shazam, you know, where you can kind of, you know, tell your 
phone to listen to a piece of music and say, well, what is that? Um, I think that would be particularly interesting and useful. Yeah. Anyway, um, another thing that I saw was this wonderful tribute by Jerry Anderson um, about David Graham. Now, David Graham unfortunately passed away a couple of months ago. Graham was the voice behind Jerry and Silver, Sylvia Anderson's most iconic characters, um, such as Parker and Brains and Gordon Tracy and various others. And it's a really lovely little video to sit and reminisce on. Um, and I'll share the link and the uh, in the notes on that one too. Um, definitely a lovely watch if you have any kind of rem um, affinity with those sorts of uh, old kids' um, programs, I think. Not just kids, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also found a trailer for Mouse, P.I. <laughs> for Hire. Now, you remember, I, I think, was it earlier this year or last year, we sort of saw the IP for um, uh, Disney's uh, Mickey uh, yeah. being released and various people using it in all sorts of odd and interesting ways. Well, this game was one of those um, potential ways that the IP was going to be used. And what's quite interesting is that now we have the official trailer for the game, which is going to be released next year. It's actually really good. I was you know, really interested to see what was going on with this particular thing. We said we tracked the IP on it. Um, it's worth having a look at it. Um, I can't wait to see the game released, to see actually what this is going to be like. Um, but I think it's going to be fairly impressive just from the look of what the, the trailer is all about. So we'll share that and see what you think. Um, Alternative viewpoints are very welcome, of course. Um, and then rather intriguingly, the the another bit of um, news that we picked up, Ben Grussy shared this one with us, um, is this kind of curious story about Kamala Harris's presidential rally live stream from, of all places, Azeroth uh, in World of Warcraft. Now, it's many, many years ago that we first came across various politicians harnessing the power of virtual worlds and MPORGs to campaign in. Um, ben and I actually talked about some of these in our Pioneers book when we were discussing the political intrigue really around Alex Chan's machinima, um, which he released uh, way back in 2005. Um, but I was kind of intrigued that this, that this sort of... Um, this is being claimed as being the first of its kind um, because it isn't fundamentally. Um, although it may well be in World of Warcraft. But I think what's quite interesting is why use World of Warcraft of all the games that you could use? Why is this one an appropriate one to reach a younger audience when the game's 20 years old and we've been lamenting its demise in, in recent episodes of this show and and moreover it's got a you know a more asian target audience in some respects so yeah there's an there's a whole lot of questions and not a lot of answers in terms of why this is being used in this particular way um however when this episode is released uh this news omnibus will be released actually i think it will be a kind of a moot point because the decision will have already been made and the votes will have been cast so whatever the impact of this uh, choice is, um, it, it'll all be behind us when, <laughs> as this episode goes live. Um, but it's it's an interesting strategy nonetheless. Um, I think irrespective of one's political persuasion, I have to say that I do fondly remember Oxhorn's wonderful take on politics using World of Warcraft, which he filmed, I don't know if you remember this, Damien, 2008 Machinima Film Festival, which took place in New York. Um, Oxhorn created this real, you know, satirical political skit on what it was like to be a candidate and, you know, how these candidates uh, stood up to one another. Um, yeah, I remember that. You do remember. It, I tried to find a link to it. I couldn't find a link. I'll dig a bit harder. I'll ask Oxhorn if necessary, but... I don't think anything much has changed in terms of the political commentary um, and the ham-fistedness that you obviously get through that kind of comedy. Um, but yeah, 
strange choice, I think, is what I would say on that one. And then in terms of the interesting projects that I picked up on, um, well, I saw probably one of the best AI generated films I've seen so far. It's called Pigeon Bringer of Doom and Destroyer of Humanity <laughs> by Solo Films. And it's been made using Runway and Mid Journey. It's horrific. It really is. It's it's uncanny and weird and gosh it absolutely works as a as a story um definitely recommend you have a look at that and then another which doesn't work quite so well is the flower that never dies and that one is by newgate's entertainment um i don't think it's quite so imaginative as the pigeon film but it's nonetheless a an intriguing more of an adventure style story well trodden tropes and what have you um but sh just shows you those two, those two films alone just show you that um, AI is becoming more usable for story making, storytelling purposes, um, which I think is in, in, intriguing in itself. And then this isn't AI, but I think, at least I don't think it is, um, but it's composited um, and it's using, I think it's using a game mod to do it. Um, uh, this one is mixing Terminator and Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> and it's an interesting conflation of these kind of story tropes where, you know, you've got uh, you've got the sort of the settled cyberpunk world juxtaposed with this, um, uh, you know, this, this the more surprising elements of the uh, Terminator character. And there's this real twist of humour in the telling of the tale that's presented. And that's by Eli Handel Bwav, who I think we've discussed in terms of mods he's created in the past. Um, so my guess is that there's a mod being promoted in the back through through the process of storytelling. Um, and again, I'll put a link to this one. Uh, and then for those of you that are new to Warhammer, um, JT Music have done their... Thing with a rap always a great intro to any game i would say just have a look at this and you will straight away get the the point of it um and for those of you who are already passionate about the game here's something else that you can have a critique of um in terms of your beloved game uh and my last thing for this month um uh in, in this month's news episode is that Ian Hubert's Dynamo Dream Part 2 is finally out, um, and it's an absolute corker. I don't know if you remember, we reviewed this um, Part 1 um, a couple of years ago, well, three years ago, I think, um, and this episode continues that story. It's called Prepare for Execution. Uh, it's a complete, uh, you know, it, it runs on directly from the end of that Episode 1 that we reviewed. Um, I'll put the link on the show notes. I'll also put the link to our previous review, um, which when I looked, I could not believe it was episode 16 of the show. Wow, that goes back quite a way, doesn't it? It goes, it's 2021. It is quite yeah. a long way. That's astonishing. Um, but you know what? We were so enamoured with it in that first episode. We've all been waiting for its second episode. And it's it's a real shame that we... Are not all here to just sort of say, yeah, that's great. I can't can't wait to sort of see what Ricky and Phil um think about it. Um, but that's it for my news this month. Some some really interesting potential resources there and some great projects for you to take a look at as well. I look forward to watching the, the prepare for execution because I do remember that was the mm. first one was so good. So yeah. that's another part of my evening entertainment, I think, covered. Sort it. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, so I've got some news. Uh, there's a lot of Star Citizen news, which is obviously a game that we um, cover quite a bit with some of the films that we review. So October is the annual Star Citizen con, and this represents the anniversary for when the game was successfully crowdfunded. Um, so every year they do a, a, a convention that you can go to in person and they show off the latest developments of the game. Yeah, this year it was in Manchester, which... It's in the UK, but um, neither of us actually went to it in person. But I did watch the live streams of some of the um, main events. Uh, and, you know, there's some things I thought we should talk about. 
So the first one that came up was the uh, it's a panel called The Stars to My Destination, Star Citizen 1.0. And this was the outline of what they consider to be the feature complete game that they could sell as a complete game experience. Um, they did say that that's not the end of their work. It's just that's where they're comfortable of calling it um, a feature of complete game. Uh -huh. And so they show off this technology as lots of base building. So if you want to do that, you can build your base on the planet. Um, and uh, they show off that. But the really thing, big thing was um, they're talking about in-game organizations that if they're big enough and have enough resources, they can build their own space stations. Um, and they showed off a lot about how that was going to be um, work there'd be five solar systems to visit which they did admit was a down from the initial 100 that they promised in the crowdfunding campaign where they said that the way that they're portraying planets has changed since then originally you would just land on a planet and you have a small set environment and you could go to a lift and it would take you somewhere else whereas now they've got the whole planet and so they have to spend a lot of time you know building all of that so doing that a hundred times i can see why they scale it down a little bit um but from the way it was phrased they will be adding more mm. systems as time goes on it's just those five are the ones that they're going to set out for this 1.0 uh, is they that, did talk of, is that uh, going to be like expansion pack stuff do you think um they didn't really elaborate on that so I, i'm not sure how it's going to work um i think they're more focused on this is where we want to be rather than what comes later but they yeah. did just they just want to make a point of that's not the end mm. um there's going to be a story that players can get involved in that will teach them various aspects of the game so you know if you want to be a combat pilot it will take you in that direction if you want to be a trader or a miner or a pirate or whatever the story will adapt and teach you what you need to know about how to play the game which i thought that's a good idea because mm. um i haven't spent a lot of time with the game because at, every time I tried it, it's not the most stable thing because it's obviously still in development. But there's a lot to do in it. And the game, because it is in development, they haven't spent a lot of time on tutorials because why would you do that when the features are going to keep getting changed anyway? So yeah. um, I understand why it's just, you know, they just drop you in it and you have to figure it out yourself at the moment. So having a, a system in place for when the game is actually released to, to teach you those things, that's a really good idea. Um, there's something else about character, um, dressing characters, uh, combining armor and clothes so you can mix and match different looks, uh, which is, you know, for machinery, that's good because you've got, gives you a greater range of character appearances for your film. Uh, but also just as a player, if you want to, you want to put a long trench coat over your armor, you can do that, uh, which is something I'd like to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's mostly about that. Um. Uh, and then the next part of it was the Squadron 42 uh, gameplay reveal. This is the single player story that takes place in the same world as um, Star Citizen. Uh, they showed off it's the first hour or so of the game and they had a developer on the stage playing it and it crashed a couple of times which always happens when they're doing their live presentations. It's become a running joke. Uh, but what he did was as soon as it was over, he went to their office, which is in Manchester as well, and he recorded a new playthrough without any crashes, which then got uploaded onto YouTube that night, which I have to admire his dedication to the game and the fans to go off and do that because it's not it's an hour and it's about an hour and a quarter. So that's a lot of time to you know to sit down and play a game and to record it and then to edit it and put it up onto YouTube uh, and all of that. So I was really impressed that he did that. It looks stunning. It's a very cinematic experience. Oh, wow. I have to admit, more. it seems like you spend more time watching it than actually playing it because they oh, really, really want to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the idea is you're this, this new pilot. You're not actually a pilot yet. You're just this young officer on the ship. Um, you want to be a pilot, but they haven't given you the training for it. Um, and so you're just there. You're talking to the captain, and then suddenly these aliens attack. And you're thrust into this huge space battle that's all taking place in real time around you. So you look out the window, you can see stuff happening. It's actually happening. It's not just a, 
uh, a rendered thing that's been put in front of the window. Um, and you've got some big name stars that so Gary Oldman was there and Mark Strong, Gillian Anderson, and Henry Cavill. Uh, they were just there in the in the battle um, doing their bit. But you spend more time watching it and then it kind of cuts in where you're in the gun turret of the ship and you're shooting out these alien ships that are attacking you. And then it goes on to the next part of the story. Um, eventually you, your ship... Do you yeah, win? You survive. Okay, that's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem was it crashed without telling the end. Uh, uh, so I did go back and watch the end afterwards and you it's kind of vague about what happens after that because they don't want to give away too much because that's uh, the beginning of the story. Um, but the ship you're on gets really badly damaged and so it cuts in and you have to you're blasting that into space and you have to you're, you're in zero gravity and you have to navigate through bits of debris to get back to the last big chunk of your ship and you get to the bridge and you have to defend it against the aliens that are boarding it um but that's where it crashed um but then you get to an escape pod and then it goes on to the next sort of part of the story whatever that's going to be they showed a sort of cinematic trailer um of just things that had that it looks very exciting mm, yeah um so yeah i'm looking forward to that uh, well i so hope it is exciting because considering how they've you know interfered with the machinima creators because of this it's got to be worth it uh, yeah to to uh, you know to justify it surely i well i think it will i mean they said that it's about 30 hour campaign um, it's well. going to yeah and they said that it's going to be released in 2026 which i wouldn't hold them to that because they do have a reputation of delaying the games because they are i think their biggest problem is um, they strive for perfection too much and they don't stop to say that's enough we can add more stuff later they just want to put it all in in one go so wow. I don't expect them to stick to that 2026 date uh, but I do look forward to playing it because I I, I liked what I saw probably oh. more than the actual open world multiplayer bit so right right um and the next thing was uh when I was waiting for one of these panels to start uh, they were showing a different part of the stream was some of their um, presenters were walking around the convention and then this area set up where these in-game organizations had tables to promote themselves and what they were doing so the presenters were going you know asking each one about what they do and there was some uh sort of like a private security company would go and uh if you need an escort you go to them and they'll you can pay them in-game money and they will come and protect your ship while you go off and do whatever it is you want to do and stuff like that but the one that i really wanted to talk about was called hubnet and this is an in-game organization that's all about making films and videos um so the guy that was interviewed he said he was the well, the organization was the netflix of star citizen uh and that's what they do is they make videos oh, and wow. there's a feature length film which uh the name of it offhand but they've done all kinds of video content anyway um hang on oh it's called overclocked that was it they had a poster oh yes i know those guys yeah uh they had a poster up on the table to promote it like a proper excellent movie poster yeah yeah, um, yeah. e yeah. studios they are yeah yeah um and so i thought you know i i understand why they have like the, the private security company and the trading companies and all that but i didn't expect an in-game movie studio yeah <laughs> Um, and so I thought I'm going to mention that on on the channel um, uh, because it's unique and it's machinima, and I kind of need to see more about what they do. And you know, we we have actually been in contact with EE Studios, um, and they did send us a link to Overclocked, and we've just never got around to having a chat about it. But it is on our list mm. of the many films and <laughs> series that we will be looking at so um yeah we are aware of these guys um and have been for possibly over a year a couple of years maybe hmm. you didn't uh, know that well <laughs> Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> uh my understanding is hubnet gets is to bring all these creators together into one so mm. ee studios is part of it and then, okay okay yeah. i see yeah, yeah 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 well overclocked is what they make i think okay Right. Um, so yeah, that is 
the all the starters of the news that I am um, I had I uh, I look forward to playing the game um when it's finished. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have actually um downloaded it uh, today. Um, one of the films we're going to be reviewing later in the month is a Star Citizen film, and after watching it, I thought it's time to. Well, after watching that and the, these presentations, it's time to give the game another try because every time I have, it's not been entirely stable, or it's run really slowly. So I'll, I'll give it another go because it's been a while. Um, but it took so long to download it that I had a little pop up um, as we were recording earlier, um, one of the previous episodes that it's only just finished installing. So I'm going to be giving it a try later. What would that uh, be? Evening. Eight nine hours? Uh, it's about six, I think. Good grief! Yeah. Exactly. And it wasn't the download, it was the actual install that took that long. The oh, download wow. it took about half an hour, and maybe an hour. I wasn't keeping track of it, but it's just it got stuck, and I thought I'll have to sort it out later, but then a little pop-up said it's complete, so I'll give it a try later. Oh, wow. Uh, I do have a few extra bits of news that um, not necessarily started to them, but still uh, machinima related. Um I did that mini episode uh, a couple of weeks ago about the secrets of Luminara contest. This is just a little reminder that when you see this video, you still have a few weeks left to enter. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to um, get people working on it as soon as possible. So you had that initial video, but this is a reminder that you've got until the end of um, the month to enter. And it's a really good prize, so it's worth giving a shot. Um, then some other news. Uh, someone has created Hamlet in Grand Theft Auto, and yes. it's going to be released in cinemas. Yes. Um, Actually, that was shown today, oh. by, or yesterday, <laughs> at the BAFTA ceremonies ceremony okay. in London. Oh, I did um, not know that. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, the guy that's um, made this and his wife, Sam Crane and Pinny Gills, I think her name is, um, have been presenting this for quite some time we've we've reviewed it on the show several months back now um when it was uh actually live performed in grand theft auto and in fact what's doing the rounds now isn't the performance but is a documentary about the performance and the and the lockdown project itself it's definitely worth uh having a look at it i haven't actually seen this um i think the documentary was first presented at South by Southwest earlier this year. Um, and on the back of that, Sam got a deal to distribute it through various channels. And then it's been doing the theatre round through those kind of channels. So I think he's flying with this documentary. I can't wait to see it. Um, uh, like I said, we 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 had a sort of preliminary arranged an interview to discuss it, but so far I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk to him about it. So that's that's something that's upcoming to do with this one. Um, but it's so exciting to see Machinima being recognised in these more formal circles um, of professional filmmaking. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. Also. Mm, me too. Me too. Uh, Wish him all the best with it. Yeah, likewise. Um. We've had the results for the Real Illusion 3D character contest, uh, which is something we discussed um, a couple yeah. months ago when it opened. Which one won it? Uh, let me have a look. There were some really impressive entries. I did not enter uh, because you, I knew they had no chance. You said, I have to say, I can see why. There were some stunning ones in there. Yeah, I think Phil said something similar as well when... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we were following the progress of it, and he said, "Yeah, no." <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the, the different wins, different uh, categories. Um, there was an old man for best uh, character design. He's kind of like a very wrinkled face. He's kind of hunched over, and it's just a huge amount of detail in his face and his costume. Um, his best character design is um, a tribal-looking character. Uh, she does look stunning in her outfit and makeup to put on her face. Um, I'm not going to read them all out because no, they're, they're no, quite no. a few. <laughs> we'll we'll have to put check the out the video. Yeah, yeah. But um, do check it out because you know these are very impressive characters that people have come up with. Uh, is, is there 
I mean, I don't know, but is the idea that these characters are then sold in a marketplace? I don't know. I think oh, it might be up to the... Uh... Or is it just an, an example of, this is what you can do with these tools as an artist? I think it's up to the artist, really, if they want to sell them or not. Um, some may want to, and I can see some might want to, well, this is my character. I don't want anyone else using it because I've got my own plans, which is... Mm, fair that's, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess we have to wait and see what they would do with them. Yeah, um, sure. But either either viewpoint is valid. I mean, I can understand if you spend a lot of time creating this character and you don't necessarily want other people to use it. You want to tell your own story with it, and you know, that's fine. That's not a criticism of when I phrased it originally. But the uh, the contest rules don't preclude you from saying, I'm not going to share this kind of thing. Uh to be honest, I didn't look that closely at the rules because I wasn't going to enter the contest. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, I thought, yeah, you know, I, I know I can't win. Um, I just look forward to seeing who does. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to all of the winners for that yeah. contest. Uh, you did some very impressive work. Always. And, yeah. And the very last piece of news I've got, um, a game called Movies Tycoon, which is one of the spiritual successors to the movies. Uh, we did mention it um, I think earlier so, this year. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, it went to early access, but now it's left early access and is a complete game. Ooh. I have to say, I've not played it, so I don't know what it's like. Um, but it just came up on my Steam news um, feed uh, a few days ago, so I thought I'd give it a quick mention uh, for those who are interested in it. Well, I look forward to seeing what folks do with that. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. the mo the movies was inspirational really for so many people was it not i mean yeah. and people think... still use it like mm. 20 years later people are still making stuff with it yeah yeah absolutely so and it even looks a little bit like that doesn't it the logo of it still has that yeah. kind of i mean it's not just the spiritual successor it's deliberately drawing on that history isn't it yeah which i think you know if, if you want to appeal to the fans of that game that's the way to go i suppose except yeah maybe i don't know yeah ip wise maybe not <laughs> well i think it's different just enough that they can get away with it possibly unless you really know the old logos yeah maybe yeah so um that's it for our news uh this month um hope you found it interesting um and you know learned a lot about the different things we've covered um do remember that contest um if you do enter Please let us know and send us your submission so we can take a look at it because, you know, it'd be interesting to see what people have Absolutely. done. Absolutely. I love yeah. looking at the things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, send that to talk at Um You can check out our website at, complete, at completelymachinery.com. And that's it from me and Tracy this week. Thank and you. We'll, <laughs> we'll be back uh, next week with some film reviews and uh, see you then. Take care and bye. Bye-bye.